You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. It's the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. And this episode starts, would you believe, with me in a queue buying meat. Uh, and that was quite some time ago. I was in a large hypermarket, which is on the outskirts of Banja Luka, called Tropic. And while I was waiting in line for the meat, I was looking around, you know, like you do, talking to my wife, but looking around. And then there was this lady looking down on me from this wall. And I thought, good gracious me, what is that? And as I looked around, there is this huge mural. And I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised. I took out my camera, my, my mobile phone to take a, a photograph of it, but I got the picture. Uh, and I thought no more about it until I went to the municipal offices in our local town, which is called Lactashi. And as we stop at the car park, there's this huge wall that has been painted. And I thought, goodness me, this is also very good. And at that time, I thought, what? And there's a little signature block, both on the mural in the um, hypermarket and on this wall that says Konyo. And I just thought, I wonder what that is. Once again, David thinks no more about it until I follow my good friend Dalibor, who works as a videographer, I believe, on a podcast called The Escape Podcast. And on one of these editions, I suddenly realise that the person that has created these two murals, and we're going to find out about that in a minute, was also drawing an amazing portrait, I, I think I can say it was, on the Escape podcast. And you'll find the Escape podcast, the link to that, in the description below. Now, I do know that the person that does this is, we're going to find out more about her, is Natasha Konyevich. I believe she's a Banja Luchanka. I'll find out if I've got that right in a minute. That means a girl from uh, Banja Luka. So, Natasha, welcome to the podcast. When people normally introduce people like yourself they trawl wiki, they trawl the internet, they trawl history books and everything else to find out, and then they tell the audience. I actually believe that the best thing that one can do is to say, Natasha, well, you tell me, who is Natasha Konyevich? First of all, hello, David, and thank you for this warm introduction. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm just, I'm surprised with your story. Um, I know that you that you saw the wall in, in Tropic, but the, the thing is, like, Maybe this this will tell you something more about myself because what you said about uh, taking picture of the of the wall that is something I'm like really bad at. So for myself, it's more like meeting the deadline. So I do the wall, like I put myself in it. I work like really hard until I finish it, and then I need to run off before taking photo of the wall. So when you when you sent me the the photo you took of Tropic. Actually, you have better photo of the of the wall than I do because I just couldn't find the time at the moment to to take the photo and I don't know when when you send me the the link I, I was really happy with it so thank you for for that one I I never told you about the about the the thing with the, with the photos of the of the wall now you studied art I believe not only in Banja Luka but you went off to Belgrade I believe what's it like for somebody that is passionate about something such as art to leave their home city and to go off somewhere else to study because it's a whole new community and it's a whole new experience. How did you find that experience? Oh, it's it's perfect. I encourage every young artist to do that because for myself, I was born in Banja Luka. I finished my high school, my uh, faculty here. And then like when you spend your entire life in one place, I mean, I did travel. A lot but still I couldn't experience the the richness of another living in another city so for me uh, Belgrade was huge experience and I would re recommend it to everyone because uh, not only I loved the teachers on the um, and the faculty I went to to masters, but also the city itself. Like it's it's huge compared to Banja Luka. It's uh, vibrant. It has uh, everything to offer to to young person. I think so. For myself, it was it was really a big thing. And I don't know. It just filled me up with the 
with all these uh, wonderful things you can find there, the street art, the the quite uh, quite a good uh, music scene. So like I don't know, I I just took a lot of a lot of things from from Belgrade and not just Belgrade, but like wherever you you have the chance to to move from the place you are living most of your life, you should you should go, you should take it. It's scary in the beginning, of course, like. Even moving in Banja Luka to my own apartment, it was scary. But I, I think you, you can, you can feel it when you should just have a little bit of courage to move out of your comfort zone. I was about to say about comfort zones and conservatism with a small C. When I first arrived in Banja Luka uh, and I was walking around, I was quite amazed with graffiti, and I will tell you why. I was born in London. I've been living back in England now for decades, but I always remember that I found that the graffiti was most offensive to me. And whilst walking around Banja Luka, I started to realise that there was actually a degree of creativity to it. And when speaking to other people of a similar age to me, it was so negative. You know, these brutalist socialist style buildings, of which there are still a lot in Banja Luka, covered with graffiti. A lot of the older people were very negative about it. And I couldn't understand why. And they said, if you really want to see some art, we'll show you some art. And it's, you know, the traditional sort of stuff that you spend hundreds of euros in a year if, before COVID, of course, when you traveled, you go and see Van Gogh and you go and see all the rest of the stuff. And then when I was walking through Bodic, that's the first time, I have to admit to you, that I'd seen walls, canvases, if you will, of this huge size. And I just couldn't get my head around how people did that. So today I'm hopefully going to find out the mechanics of it. I know that you do small works. I know that you do these monumentally huge works. What made you choose murals? I mean, it's not something that every artist student of art would go for it seems exceedingly complicated and exceedingly time consuming and it's a logistic nightmare so why murals natasha why <laughs> i love the logistic uh, nightmare <laughs> so um yeah to be honest for myself i um i don't consider myself quite courageous person but from time to time i see these little windows where i just need a little bit of courage and then to to jump on the train and it will lead me somewhere so for the murals what happened like i finished uh, uh, art academy actually i did didn't do the painting uh, it was art printing so it has nothing to do with with murals and um, after i finished that i was involved with uh, this uh, ngo from banja luka called zdravodaste maybe maybe you heard of it mm -hmm. they do a lot of uh, a lot of work with young people so i had the chance to uh, visit some international workshops based on uh, street art illustration uh, theater uh, music and all, all different stuff and I had the chance to meet people who uh, do street art for more than 10 years there so for myself that was the the first how to say like the the, the there I I got the wish to do it and before doing really big wall I did only like wall that is like a bigger canvas maybe two meters by four or something like that that's basically the the baby mural it's it's not big so after that there was a competition in Priedor which is a city near near Banja Luka and it, it was the the first year they uh, they organized the mural competition called Paula de Maninkor and uh, I decided to apply and I applied and I got the the first prize so I needed to paint the wall that is like 12 meters high and I haven't done it before so of course I was scared but I had assistance from my friends and also I talked with my dad who is a electrician and he's a guy uh, who he's good with logics and finding solution to all kinds of problems so I talked with him what's the what's his thoughts on how how is the best way to approach the wall how should i transfer it and that was the first time when i used the so-called grid uh, system to transfer the the sketch to the wall so basically what you do you split your uh, drawing into 
grids like a puzzle. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe buying us a coffee. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. Um, we just had a haircut. This okay. is one of the things that happens in Bosnia and Herzegovina, especially, oh, I don't know. Anyway, Natasha, I'm so sorry about that. You were talking about your um, breaking up the walls into grids, and that's when it, everything went bang here. So I'm sorry about that. So you, so you break the, the wall down into grids. Does this make it easier for you then to transfer your idea uh, onto the wall? Yeah, exactly. So what I said, like, it's like kids playing with puzzles. So you need to fit every piece where it goes. So you just follow the sketch uh, that is like split in the in the grid and then you just connect the dots, connect the lines. It's it's uh, actually a huge game <laughs> in the end. I saw on uh, your Instagram feed that you have to use these cranes to lift you up onto these large scaffolding construction sort of scaffolding so that you can paint i for one are terrified of heights so not only have you got to put your vision on the wall especially when it's very high but also concerning yourself your own safety how do you focus first day is always tricky like first day you know that you're gonna make mistakes on the wall on the drawing and you just you're scared, you, you're getting used to either it's scaffolding or uh, it's huge green, what you said, like first day, it's always adjustment day. Yeah, I also get, have a uh, fear from heights, but as my friend told me, who, who is also a muralist, he told me, no, you don't, <laughs> because like you wouldn't be able to, to climb up here, you would just faint. So you don't have the fear, you're just being careful, that's it. We were talking, um, or, or, or you laughed when you said about, when I mentioned the comment about uh, logistics, not only do you have to find all this equipment that you need, but there's one logistical problem that you must face, which is the unexpected. We just had an log a logistical problem here with the power going. What happens like when you're painting and it suddenly starts to rain? H how do you cope with that? I mean, paint needs to dry, right? Exactly. But when it's raining, you're not painting and that's, that's it. I mean, it's a problem if you have a deadline that should be uh, met. But on the other hand, for myself, I deal more easily with that because I know it's not something I can uh, impact on. Like, I, I cannot change the weather. So for myself, it's like I deal with it easy. Okay, it's raining. I cannot do anything. But yes, it's tricky because a lot of walls that I did are done, let's say, September, October, when the season of the rain is starting. So it's tricky to, to find the seven days if you need to to paint outside but also on the other hand like it's i don't know it's not good also to paint in july let's say because it's so hot and the paint dries so easily so it's really like we recently we finished one wall in uh, in gradishka and it was like for three days it was held from one to till like four in the in the afternoon because it's just it wasn't possible to paint the sun was hitting the the wall so hard and if you have the white wall like pure white it's hell because it's just it reflects back to you and like if you have 30 or more degrees it's it's just impossible to paint because the you mix the paint to to put it on the wall and then in five minutes it's dry it's it has the yeah so either way it's i don't know it's perfect if it's a bit cloudy so i would say like 20 degrees and cloudy that's the perfect weather to to paint outside oh so you'd be really happy in 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 my home country where we never seem to see <laughs> the where we never seen rain um i i was with my wife we went when we went to gradishka because that's where we were going to speak to you first and then a lot of things got in the way uh, and we were taking photographs um of the wall and I remember saying to Tamara, what goes through an artist's head when somebody comes up and says, hey, I'd like you to do, the, do this for me? In other words, a commission. Do you think uh, in detail about that? Do you think about whether it's ethical, whether it fits with what you're all about before you accept it? What are the sort of things that you 
that concern you? You know, like if I was to come up now and say, I'd like you to paint uh, the UK flag on the side of the National Assembly of the Republic of Srpska, for example, extreme example, I know. Um, <laughs> what, what sort of things do you think about? Because I'm sure you would say, David, we cannot do that there. Right. But um, so, so what are the thoughts when when somebody comes to you and says, Natasha, I want you to do this? Is it a case of just saying, hey, I'll do it? Or what is the thought process that you have? Uh, I love that you asked this question because I haven't been asked before, to be honest. Uh, and I find it really important. Like for myself, I never took something that I thought was unethical or uh, it's it, it it can make any harm to anyone like i i was really strict about that i did some work that for example uh, in the beginning i did like kids rooms children's rooms because like it was uh, let's say easy cash it's quick to do it but on the other hand you're not expressing yourself as an artist like you you are not evolving in your art style and just like your creati creativity there, it's not high. But on the other hand, you um, you have to ch the, the chance to ga gain more experience with painting on the wall. So, and also like you can spread uh, people that, that you paint for, they can spread the word about you being someone who paints walls, of course. But for myself, it was a huge thing to just reject the projects that I didn't feel comfortable doing, that I didn't believe in, even if it's it wasn't offensive to anyone. It's just if I don't believe that that's something that should be done or should be done by me, like I I will not accept it. So yeah, I, I'm I'm strict about that. This leads nicely on to, to my next question for you. Bosnia Herzegovina and the Balkans in general, uh, I know a lot of people are gonna give me some hate comments on this, I'm sure. But it's still a patriarchal community. It's still hugely male-dominated. Um, and I loved um, the fact that you accepted to do the mural in Sarajevo recently uh, of the first professional female professional journalist, newspaper proprietor uh, and editor-in-chief. Uh, in, in as part of a, a project to highlight successful uh, women in Bosnia and Herzegovina. When somebody gives you a challenge like that, does, and I mean that, that is, a, that is a, I would say, a political statement in a way, um, does that put added stress so you get it right? I mean, that one in Sarajevo is, is brilliant. It, it highlights to everybody that women certainly have a role in, in this country. Yeah, so that one actually... Uh, we did the the book, uh, Women of Bosnia and Herzegovina, like three years ago, I think already. So when I accepted to do it then, like I, my opinion hasn't changed in three years on the topic. I also think that uh, still this is what you said, like uh, male dominant society. But I don't know for myself. I don't I don't see it as a how to say as a. I, I I see it as a challenge. Like I I don't see myself as someone who needs to to listen to the to the propaganda or whatever is happening. I I see myself as someone who has enough uh, skills and uh, is just I, I have the opportunity to to say something and to do something on my own. And I'm quite a stubborn person and I, I'm persistent. So I don't know, for myself, I, I don't see, um, because, sorry, if I'm, if I'm jumping like, with the, just my brain, this, this topic is also a huge thing. And uh, like, I have a lot of things to say about that. So I'm just like trying to, to wrap my mind around what, what exactly to say. What I wanted to say uh, concerning the being a female uh, street artist here, I I didn't have uh, that big of a, uh, I don't know like negative critic or like people trying to to say that uh, I shouldn't do that like I'm a female I should be in kitchen that narrative I I didn't have that usually it was like uh, people people were uh, 
thrilled to see like women can can do stuff that usually it's it's male stuff so just climbing on scaffolding it's for them it was like oh female is there so yeah i don't know i with with mural in in sarajevo i i didn't hesitate at all to should i do it or should i not do it because for myself with the as as you already know in in balkans in bosnia especially like the identity thing uh concerning bosnia it's huge it's um it's suffocating at times like you should say who you are concerning the your nationality and like religion and stuff you know how important here people make it but for myself i would like to focus on other things because i i think the the narrative about like who is who here it's just taken so much time like 30 years it's too much so i would like to focus on like actual results that people made for example as uh, milena mrazovic did so she she made a lot of things as you said like she was first female journalist and editor in chief and she was composer and actually she did the first uh, concert of classical music and it was held in Banja Luka. So she was living in in the city that I was born and raised for some time. So why shouldn't I do it? I mean, I, I don't see the I don't see the logic to be honest behind the the thing that I should like think about should I do it or should I not do it because she like it wouldn't be maybe uh it wouldn't be logical to do her mural in let's say uh, Egypt <laughs> because she has nothing to do with Egypt. But for to, to do it in Sarajevo, of course, I accepted it. I looked at the picture, uh, and sometimes I get weird thoughts going through my mind, but I, I'm going to ask you about your feelings uh, on this question. Um, I, I think you're most probably going to get a little bit embarrassed about it, so I'm warning you in advance. I thought this is amazing because Milena was a trailblazer in the 1890s uh, and the early 1900s. Uh, and I actually thought this is amazing because there's a trailblazer painting a trailblazer. Do you feel that you're a trailblazer in your particular niche of art? Maybe in um, I, I was thinking about that, but like maybe in um, like a woman street artist in in Bosnia, because like th- there are actually a lot of people in in Bosnia that that do murals and street art. But I was talking to. Uh, Marina uh, from uh, the the girl that started and uh, she's a founder of uh, Street Art Mostar. So they celebrated 10 years now and I asked her uh, last year if there is a... Because she knows all of us, she knows everyone in Bosnia that does murals and street art. And I asked her if there is another female artist from Bosnia that does buildings, like big walls. And she said, no, you're the only one. So. I I don't know I as I'm stubborn I have to say that I'm also a proud pers- person so like I'm not gonna be like um, how to say uh, we have we have the the word for it in in our language like t- just to be like fake humble I, I'm not gonna be that now it just that's just a fact for now as I say like for now I'm sure like there is uh, really a lot of uh, young artists that. Are just starting so i'm happy to see what they are going to do and for sure there will be more and more so i don't know it's it's a it's a nice fact to to have like uh i don't know to wear it as a badge or something I don't know. well i i would say i would say that if you are the only one and i checked this out and i couldn't find another if you are the only one you normally have the label while you are the only one of being unique so it's really nice to know that I'm speaking to a unique person in the field of art. You were talking about what you do. Uh, so this leads on to, to, to my next question. What piece that you have created, big or small, are you the most proud of? Okay, I think it would be the, the wall I did in Gradishka last year, the, the one with the store, white stork, because... Um, it was the first, the, the biggest wall I did alone on, on my own and I did it with Crane, 
which I haven't used before. Like I did only like smaller wall with the, with crane. It's like seven meters high, so it's not that big. And this one is like 15 meters by 12, something like that. And uh, the surface was just terrible. And uh, of course, they were rainy days, so it it's went on and on. Like the that was the longest wall I did, the toughest one, the hardest one. Also because there were days where we would work for like three hours and that was it. And that doesn't work. <laughs> you need to have the entire day to, to work to just be able to, to finish it. So maybe I, I would say I'm that was the most difficult one to do. So I would say I'm the most proud of that one. I actually, I, I like that as well. And, I, and yeah, it's uh, because Gradishka is also the home of the stork in uh, the, nor- the north of Bosnia-Herzegovina. I wish we had storks here, but I don't know. We're, we're, we're too far away from it when you're out and about and you're you're doing things for example in 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 kindergarten schools and you see young people young people are always so investigative uh, and they must be stood there looking at you doing this especially the kids and going what about what about what about this do you ever have the thought of or do you actually ever interact with younger people and and try and stimulate them into into being another you yeah, actually, uh, I had I, I remember one thing from uh, the wall I did in Zanitsa, uh, which is also a city in, in Bosnia. So I did it in a schoolyard on one of the walls of the of the school, and I love the fact that like when kids were passing by, they would comment usually that they do like they are impressed with uh, just people climbing up and down <laughs> to be honest that's for them that's enough and then when they see that you paint something that's another thing so uh what i loved it's like seeing uh, one of the there was one of one group of kids all boys except one one uh, girl and they were looking up while i was painting and i don't know i saw just saw her smiling and i told her do you like it? And she said, yeah, yeah, I do. I said, like, you can do it in a few years. Like, for sure you can do it. And also what I what I love there, it's uh, just being, just having the opportunity to show to young girls, especially, to, to see them, to make them see me while working on the, on the building, to make it like a normal thing to see for them. Like, they have seen it okay it's is the same like when you see uh i don't know for example some mushroom that you know it's rare or something like that when you find it you found it and that's it like the next time you find it it's not a big deal so just being able to to be there and to show them like this is not impossible this is not that difficult and like you can do it even in bosnia so yeah, being being able to uh, just to, to do my work in the environment of uh, uh, schoolyard, it's for myself. I think it's enough, and also like uh, kindergarten. What what you said, like just to to make. I don't know. I, I'm kind of sensitive on the topic of feminism and like in general, just showing the the girls that it's possible. Like you, you can do it, and it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah, it it means a lot. When you sat down on that first day uh, in the art faculty on the course that you had applied for and been accepted for, you must have had a dream or a vision in your head. Wow, here I am today, and this is the output, the highway, if you will, to what I want to achieve. I bet a lot has changed, and you never thought that you on that first day that you would be doing the things that you are now have things been that radically different from that first dream yes because (laughs) i also when i decided to how i decided to apply for art faculty it's also um, i don't know for me quite interesting story because i graduated from a gymnasium gymnasium Mm -hmm. grammar school so yeah yeah okay thank you when I needed to do my final exam for the for the school, 
I didn't know what to do because like every week I had something different in mind. Usually you take the exam that you will continue. Like it can be of use to you to like the to go further on the on the faculty. So I couldn't decide because I wanted to do to be ecologist, biologist, English teacher, um, psychologist, architect. I don't know <laughs> a lot of things. So every week it was something else. And then I just decided, okay, I'm going to take art classes as final exam because I really love art, but I um, haven't been that hard. Uh, I haven't been uh, studying hard while in high school, especially the, the, the art class. So I decided like, okay, I want to learn something more. So I'm going to take it and then I'm going to figure out what... Uh, what to apply for, like what, what college after that. And there I met my, um, my friend. He's now my friend. He was my teacher then. I mean, he didn't, we, we just met on the, on the exam and he told me like, okay, like we were just chit chatting and I said, I draw something, but I never took it seriously. Like possible career or something I, I was just thinking like okay this is something that I like to do when I'm bored and <laughs> basically that was it like my entire life until uh, art faculty art was something that I would do when I'm bored and when I want to do something creative that that wasn't like the the usual story like when I was three I knew I wanted to be artist no, I had not, no idea until 16 years old that you can live being an artist. Like I was thinking like, okay, that happened in past. Like I, I, it just wasn't something that I thought much of. And that art teacher, a friend of mine, he told me like, you should apply for art faculty. I'm going to help you prepare for the, for the exam. And just like that, like in, in that, in one sentence, I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then I went home and while walking home, I was thinking like, oh, my parents will be so pissed. Like they, there is no chance that they will let me do it. And they were just happy for me to decide, like to finally make the decision. Like, okay, you know what you want to, uh, to study because it was a horror. Like for three months, I was like just not knowing what, where to go else because I was a good student as well. And like, just had a lot of interest so it was difficult to decide like what what to do and then when i got into art faculty it was just like i something that i'm good at like i can be really good at it was just more of a i don't know wh while being on art faculty it was more about getting skills i, I took it more i think as a school than as i don't know like my career starts here. It's just like I, I, I don't know. I didn't have the the big dream of, dream of being like artist that lives actually of selling her art or I don't know. Especially with murals, because as I mentioned you to you before. To find out more about us and where we live, why not check out our blog? Yeah, another quick glitch um, there, Natasha. You've given me an nearly an hour of your time on a Sunday, which is which I'm totally grateful for. Um, so here's my, my last question. What is next for Konya? What is next for Natasha Konyevich? So uh, we were talking only about murals, but I also do illustrations quite a lot. And it's something that takes a lot of my time. So illustrating children's books or editorial illustration. And I have like for the past three years, I have been working really hard and most of the, the work is commission work. And now I rejected a lot of work, a lot of jobs. So I could have like the November, December and January free just to, to paint and draw my own stuff because I haven't done it in a long time. Because it, it's really difficult to, to find the, for myself maybe for other people I, I see that they can do it but for myself it's difficult to jump from uh, one illustrator project to a mural and then to find a gap to do some of your work own work personal stuff it's 
it's just for myself it wasn't possible to organize everything so what i decided it's just to to reject uh, most of the work that was offered for uh, november and december as i said i want to make uh, more uh, personal work and possibly an exhibition but we will we will see about that because i really miss painting and drawing and just doing it for the doing whatever i want because most of the work as i said were commission work in the past 3 years and i i kind of feel that i need to to find myself again to explore more to experiment more because i find myself now that i got stuck in a loop in a way with the with works and with uh, art style that i was doing so i would really like to explore more and to to see where where it can lead me natasha thank you so much for uh, uh, an illuminating uh, i'm going to say that see it's an arty word an illuminating insight into yeah a trailblazer in modern day bosnia and herzegovina and while you were just saying about plans for the future maybe next year in the summer if there is such a thing as a, a day or two of your free time I think we should take a camera, a video camera, and travel the country and do a little road trip based on where your murals are. I think that would be a, a, a pretty cool and exciting yeah. project. <laughs> um, thank you so much again for, for your time. In the description that uh, goes with this podcast, wherever people will see it, hear it, or whatever, I've got a whole host of links to your Instagram account, to your Facebook page, and also some other art sites and i really hope that people take some time and uh, and check it out because it is amazing so yeah thank you so so much for this and you know this gives another insight to people that know nothing about bosnia and herzegovina that actually it's a vibrant country with with so much to offer and so much to see and i think whether people are looking at mosques churches hills, valleys, tasting food, drinking rakia, they're also going to get a buzz out of seeing the wonderful work that you have for them to see here in, in your home country. So thank you once again. Thank you, dear David, for hosting me. Thank you for your patience with me to, to find the time to, to do this. It was really pleasant. And thank you for promoting Bosnia, actually, in, in a really good way. So I'm really happy to uh, to be able to to do this with you so thank you thank you once again